morning on evolutionary drivers. I love this little guy in the red car. He's going, and he's going right up the hill. I'd like to begin this morning with a, uh, where I first heard this term, was a wonderful experience of meeting a great visionary of our time, Barbara Marx Hubbard. And she says, and I quote, the lessons of evolution teach us that problems are evolutionary drivers and crises precedes transformation, giving a new way of seeing and responding to our personal and planetary situations. So if you are here in this congregation this morning and you happen to believe that you came to earth to fulfill a mission, or maybe you believe also that you are destined to meet certain people and learn new things to attain that mission. Also, you may believe we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And it would be like there would be to me, if that's true, some kind of plan, a blueprint. For us to fulfill the time while we're on this planet. We know that from the Christian perspective that it teaches pre-existence. Strangely enough, a lot of Christian denominations and religions do not acknowledge that and yet they acknowledge the Bible and oftentimes they don't know it's in their Bible. <laughs> I do wonder. <laughs> But their Bible, our Bible, says that we were found in God before the foundation of the world. And we were found holy and blameless with all spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1, 3, 4. Again, that shows us that we had an existence before we came into these physical bodies. I want to talk on something that people call soul contracts. The concept of soul contracts serves as guides to get us where we have chosen to get in our purpose for incarnating. There are no accidents. Everyone has a purpose and comes with a purpose and a blueprint. Sometimes this is called the book of life, your life. Your life is a book. Your life is a script. A part of what we call the soul holds that script. There's a higher part of our soul that is connected more to our spirit. And there's a lower part of our soul that is connected to our physical human experience. But the higher soul, which is connected to the heart helps us to bridge the divine and the human. That is the intent of the heart is to allow that to become one thing rather than separate. Gary Zirkoff, I'm sure you've heard of, who wrote the famous book, um, what was the book? The uh, Something of the Soul, Seed of the Soul, yes. I remember reading it way back in the 80s before Oprah got a hold of it. <laughs> oh, I want to say about Oprah. Has anybody seen her series of uh, belief? Isn't it amazing? It's probably the most wonderful thing that has been produced are these six nights that she has produced these documentaries on going into all the religions of the world. I can't even tell you what it's like. I'm sure they'll be out and available when it's all over. But I encourage you to uh, see. I've, I've not seen all of them, but I've been, I was so blessed. Uh, Oprah is definitely being used on a global level to give us an opportunity to come together, no matter what our backgrounds are. And what a great time. But he says before it, it incarnates, each soul enters into a sacred contract with the university, uh, with the university, we are in a university, <laughs> I call it God School 101 Earth. <laughs> the uh, contact with the, the universe to accomplish certain things. It enters into the commitment in the fullness of its being. 
whatever the task that your soul has agreed to, all of the experiences of your life serve to awaken within you the memory of that contract and to prepare you to fulfill it. Part of my message comes from experience and I'm, I'm learning that experience is becoming so much powerful than just speaking from just knowledge that we download in books and things like that. All that's good too. But when you are at this point of life, you have some experience. It is sad that that's one of the things we do is we put aside our elderly people and yet other cultures has revered them as those with great wisdom that we can learn from. Tell that to your children and your grandchildren. <laughs> so, I will tell my story real quickly, and this is uh, as quick as I can, I'll get through this. I came in at 10 months, which I thought was interesting. I just always thought it was interesting that I came in when I did, that I wanted to hold on another month. For some reason, I had to be born under a certain sign and time to set a precedence for myself. Also, as I came in, I began to recognize, uh, and the only way I can describe it is an innate, inherent fear slash anger that was weaved within my personality and my nature. How many know we all have a different uh, tenure of personality? You know, some people have more lean toward mel melancholy. Some people have a more joyful. I mean, we all have a different tenure of kind of how our personality is that's natural to us. It's very natural to us. And I, when I came into spirituality um, in the 80s, I began to hear about uh, these classes on healing the child within, Bradshaw's work. And we all flocked to those workshops thinking that what we needed to heal is something that happened after we got here. And I went through those classes and I just didn't feel a resonance with what everybody was talking about. Everybody was talking about child abuse and abandonment and, and uh, parents that broke up. And I, had, I didn't fit any of those. I had a pretty good upbringing, had a pretty good family life as far as it can go. I really had no complaints about that. I had great parents who loved me. And I didn't fit into that. So that made me know that this was not the level of the cause of what it is I was trying to heal in myself. Then as I moved further into uh, more new thought, new agey type thinking, uh, I began to look into reincarnation as an answer. That maybe it was something from a past life somewhere. So I was able to be with some of the best hyp hypnosis uh, th uh, people and the best regression people. And I went through some of those to kind of see if it was back there. Found some interesting things, but it did not touch the cause of what I was looking for. Then I had an experience. And where I found the answer to this healing that took place was not in a past life, was not in my story as in this lifetime, but it was in between a lifetime. <laughs> between a lifetime. And I had this experience in which, uh, I can't tell all that, but I was before, it seemed like to me three entities, and they were reviewing a little bit about this lifetime I'm, that I began uh, almost 70 years ago. Soon, 70 years ago. Way too soon, 70 <laughs> years ago. And um, they uh, did that, and then they, they said to me, they didn't say to me, this is all telepathy. It's a whole, when you're in the fifth dimension, it's a whole different way of doing everything. Color's different, communication's different, it's all different. And it's hard to explain it in this dimension. But what was said to me, how I interpret it, was we need enough souls to volunteer to live out how many lifetimes it would take in linear lifetimes to reach it in this lifetime. And they said to me 
The reason was is because for many, many people, this is the last lifetime in this third dimension. And I was one of those. And I know that in the depths of my soul. I can't say what you know, but I know I will not return back into this third dimension. So, of course, yes. <laughs> you know, I'll go. Boy, you got to be careful you make these contracts. You know, all sounded good then. So they somehow figured out and told me. And why they told me this is because we live on a free will zone planet. And because through our free will, not enough of us has reached the level in consciousness collectively in which to stabilize the new norms that were coming into our planet from higher fifth dimension, fourth dimension to third dimension. Therefore, it would take a critical mass of souls to enter into contracts that they would have to experience in this lifetime what it would take so many lifetimes to get them there in free will. For me, it was four. Four lifetimes. So what I'm getting to is once I had this experience and understood that one, and this is important, I'm not a victim of God. We talk about victimizations, but we do not talk about the biggest one, and that is we feel our life is totally controlled by a God. There was no control. When I was in this place and experience, I didn't feel like anything was over me. I didn't think anything was different. I was everything. I was them. This was me. I was the color that I saw. I was the presence that was in the room. It was just totally at one moment with everything. But you see, I come from a religion that said God is in control. A separate God than me is in control of my life. And I don't have any choices. So at 16 years old, when I got the call, I got the call. We have to be, we have to be concerned about this, these things about God chose us and God called us. When it says God chose us, anyone or God chose a people it meant they chose and therefore they were known as the chosen God didn't choose it didn't make sense to me that God would choose one nation of people over another nation of people I don't I don't serve that God I don't serve a God that is respecter of persons I do not serve a God who is racial I do not serve a God that looks at things on a national level you know I, th that which I worship and serve in my heart is a, a universal my father which is in heaven and Aramaic means my universal father Amen. so I felt God called me at 16 and what I discovered was I was just pissed. <laughs> that I did not get to finish high school with my friends. I didn't get to go to a prom and I was out preaching pastoring my first church at 19 in the midst of Montgomery, Alabama and 63, do I have to tell you more? I was thrown right into one of the hor most horrible times of our history and yet one of the greatest times in our history. But it was a horrible time to be in that particular part of the country with so much hatred and so much going on under the watch of George Wallace and all of that going on. And I was just angry about it. Then I found out as I came in for my birth that I had this experience of being overwhelmed at the contract that I've said. I'm going to come in as this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. Whatever it takes, whoever it takes into my life, I made a contract for, uh, to allow them to come in as long as they were there as an opportunity to move me toward my destiny in this lifetime. Now, when you make those kind of contracts, that doesn't mean everybody in your life you're going to draw in is going to be pleasant. <laughs> come on, I'm trying to help you out here. 
you that sat and fume and carry on about I wish I hadn't got into that marriage and I wish I hadn't got into that relationship and I wish I hadn't have done that and I wish, you know, all, uh, all these kind of things that we, we could tell probably most of us. Wonder if we could shift that, have an inner miracle within our consciousness today and move that to everyone is my teacher and everyone was an opportunity for me to grow and to learn. Why spend your energy and time regretting the people that you have drawn into your life? As I was coming through, I became totally overwhelmed and fearful at what I had done. Now, when I understood the anger and the fear coming from that level, it was gone. Now, I have my fears and I have my stuff, but it's, I, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about my, my daily personality, David stuff. I'm talking about this innate thing was no longer within me. This is why I'm as bold as I am to get them to do what I do. I have no fear when it comes to spiritual stuff. None. Now, other things, woo. <laughs> ah, it's a spider. Ah, it's a snake. Ah. It's a different thing. I'm not talking about that. I don't like those things. But when it comes to being bold to speak, whatever it is that I feel God has given to me, I will do it because of that healing. Because that is not the nature I was born with. I was born as an introvert, very quiet, wanted to withdraw, not be seen. Can you imagine? <laughs> but you who know me outside of here know that I'm a little bit that way. You know a different David completely. I'm rather quiet in my own way, in my own nature. But just get me up in the spirit. And I'm ready to go. It's important that you understand that even though we have karma working into our life, which just merely means for every action there's a reaction. But I want to tell you, contracts trump karma. So you can't say, oh, well, I drew someone in to, to this, for this abusive relationship because I probably did something bad in another lifetime. Maybe not. You brought them in due to the contract of them becoming an evolutionary driver in your life. I've said this many times and I will say it again. I'm not up here before you, here in unity, where I am in consciousness, teaching what I'm do doing because of the great, wonderful things of my life. They did not lead me to this direction. It was the worst things that happened to my life that made me dig deeper, that made me cross lines that I would not have felt comfortable. Places I was told not to go, things that I was told never to read. <laughs> You know, I heard of this unity thing. You know, people drive by unity where I live and they say, that's where the cult people are. Say, Whoa. But Helen, that was a projection. <laughs> because I was in the cult. <laughs> no, it's been the challenges of my life. It's been how I've come in that I've had to dig deeper and go deeper into my life to understand. I regret nothing. And I know if you just check in your spirit right now, you'd probably find out you wouldn't do it any different than the way you've done it. You may think you would on the surface, but if you go into your heart mind, you will realize that everything that has happened has brought you to where you are today. By astrologically choosing the time and place of your birth, you determine the nature that affects you and your experience for your life. It's very important. I, I needed to be Sagittarian, I guess. I needed to be a fire sign. Now, you say, I don't remember any such things. I was blessed to have this experience, but most people don't. Mainly because the density of a physical body can make it difficult to remember what the soul sets up. 
The ironic thing is that one of the greatest challenges about being in the human experience, or being in the human experience, but also at the same time brings the greatest rewards. The purpose of everything in your life was for one reason, spiritual growth. Contracts work on spiritual and subconscious levels. But they're always there to help to guide your life. They can help set up the earthly circumstances, life situations, and people you encounter. So you reach the level of fulfilling your soul purpose in this lifetime. If you could just for a moment grasp this idea, and that's all I'm asking. I'm not trying to convert anybody to this. I know my experience was my experience. It's not a belief. I had the experience, and I know for myself, that everything about me and who I am in this life, I helped to co-author, co-create. I said yes to. That takes out all of the, life's been unfair to me. Life has been too difficult for me. I didn't deserve it. These are the things that become the blockages. These are the things when we work with energy work and removing blockages. Those are the blockages that end up in our energy is I do not take responsibility for my life. This is the step that we're taking as we're moving out of all of this age of reductionism. Dominion over Mother Earth. Men over women. All of this time in which all we've done is end up developing an ego. Which is a part of the process. Even the ego. Even the ego is a part of the process. The ego is about identity. Unfortunately, in the density of the human experience, we've totally forgot who we truly were. And how blessed we are in this community to at least to come to that level where we have at least opened up to this great idea that we are sacred divine human beings. But you know we can say that all we want. We can believe that all we want. We can sing it in our songs all we want. We can minister from here all we want. But that doesn't mean that we're connected to it. You see these microphones and you see these lights. We would be right to say these are microphones and these are lights. But it doesn't mean they're actually producing ability to amplify sound and to put light into this room unless we turn them on and they're connected into something called electricity. It's good that I can say it's a light or a lamp, but if the lamp is not plugged in, it's not going to shine. And what we have to do with all this that we are looking at in the sense of uh, mental beliefs and ideas is we've got to learn how to be connected into it. So if, if I plug in my lamp, I do not understand electricity. I could not tell you one thing about what electricity is and how it works. I just know if I plug it in and turn it on, the lamp's going to shine. This brings us to the question, why? Why? That's the big question. It's not what or how. But it is why would someone choose a so-called negative experience like a difficult childhood or an abusive relationship? Why? Or come into the world with a challenging physical situation. We have to realize that sometimes we learn from the toughest teacher. 
You may have been to the challenge at times that you thought it was unfair or it was difficult, but yet you came out of it with something you didn't have, something that would affect the rest of your life. It was hard while you were going through it, but then you become more empowered. The Bible talks sometimes that we need to watch those who just want to tickle our ears. Did you know that? In other words, that means people, I go where people tell me what I want to hear. People who affirm me all the time so I can validate myself and say, I'm perfectly right where I am. Therefore, not growing, not developing, not seeking, not expanding, and mostly not evolving themselves. I've said ever since I've come here that a community to me is not a dead organization, but it's a living organism ever evolving, ever changing, and reinventing itself to fit the time. Time moves on. Do you think cars don't? Do you think clothes don't? Most of all of the things that you buy is a stream of change and evolution toward the more complex. Except religion. Except most organized religion still tries to hold on to what the beliefs were hundreds and thousands of years ago with never looking at it. Now you've got a pope that is revisiting what does the church mean in our time? That's revolutionary. I call him a plant. I call these people a plant because I believe, I believe God has strategically planted some of his representatives in every system that's out there. He's got one in the medical or two. He's got in science. He's got them in religion education, every one of them, God is visiting with an opportunity to say, let's revisit and relook at the system and let's recreate it on a different vibration. Education is one that most concerns me. Too many children are coming in that don't fit the old model of education. And because of that, they're being punished for it and making the pharmaceutical company a little richer. We do not try to make our children fit old systems. We need to make old systems fit new children. We need to find another way in which they learn. They're wired different. We know they have different DNA. That is proven that most of us with only 20 out of the 64 combinations of DNA turned on, they have 24 and above and are no longer human by the old criteria, I'm quoting. They are no longer human beings by the old criteria. They're going to learn better with sound, vibration, music, color. But we're trying to make them to fit the old. That's the conservative idea. Let's go back and keep the status quo. There are new things emerging to the top of consciousness that is ready to burst in. That's why I love this idea of new entrepreneurship. I think that you are sitting here have no idea what lurks deep within your soul that is trying to come alive and awake and just needs a little guidance that's going to change your status. There's nothing wrong with wanting abundance. There's nothing wrong with making more money. I'll say it, money. You know, we dance all around the money thing. I do because we, that's a touchy subject, but there's nothing wrong with having more money. And I'm, I'm sure you're going to find out if you're going to be a new entrepreneur, you're going to need money to do it. I've always said, God, give me money so I won't have a need for money. That's the only reason I want money, so I don't have, 
I can totally eradicate any desire or need for it. But if Spirit says to me, last week I was in Phoenix ministering, and I wanted to go. I hadn't been with these people for 30, 40 years. They invited me out there. I wanted to go. I knew it was a small group. I knew there would be a lot of money, but I still felt to go no matter what it looked like. But thank goodness I had the ability to do that by getting a plane ticket. I could go instead of saying, I can't afford to come to you. Although my spirit is saying, go, I can't do it because I'm in some kind of a need or lack. We need abundance of health. There's too much going on with all of us. Way too much. We should be a healthy community. That's plugging the lamp in and letting the light of health shine. We need to be a blessed community. A people set on a hill that cannot be hidden. So I'm closing with this thought. This is where I'd like for you to visit in your meditations. Are the things that have brought me to this place in my understanding and my consciousness the contracts that I have made? I'm going to continue this next Sunday into the why of the hard questions. Why are people incarnated into bodies that have challenges? Why all of these things have happened in our life? I'd like to address that because I think you have a right to know because we want to clear out any of the past stuff. We'll never move forward if we keep dragging the old baggage of feeling guilty and regretting and beating ourselves up because we think we made a, long, a lot of rot, wrong decisions. I'd like for you to visit in a different way and see that everyone is your teacher and everyone was your opportunity to help you to grow. And now you're going to see a growth spurt like you've never seen before, which means some more harder challenging things are coming. This is finals, God School 101. <laughs> so I think if we come in with these understandings, we'll understand that.